Good morning, everyone. As always, what you're supposed to do, place your cross on first. If you are a follower of Christ, you put your cross on. That's part of it. And like I said before, it's not a physical cross. You understand? If you don't have faith, that necklace around your neck don't mean a thing. You understand? I'm just letting y'all know that. That doesn't automatically protect you. You know, living by the word of God is what protects you. The cross is just a symbol. You understand? Just remember that. Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. You know, there are even sorcerers out there that wear crosses. But anyway, <laughs> again, put your cross on first. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Lord Jesus, I thank you for waking me up this morning. I thank you for giving me a blessed weekend. Lord Jesus, I hope today is going to be a blessed day for me. And for those at the sound of my voice, Lord Jesus, keep watch over me, my wife, and our kids, Lord Jesus. Touch us in a very special way. Direct our path this, after, this morning, Lord Jesus. Direct our path for the rest of our life. Lord Jesus, I thank you for everything. I ask you to use me as you seem fit to bring forth whatever it is you want me to bring forth. Send your Holy Spirit to comfort it, to teach me, to give me wisdom. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Um, I've been reading Acts lately, but I'm on Acts chapter 15. It's not really much going on in that verse, but I'm just going to reiterate through some things in regards to being a Christian, being a disciple of the Lord. But I've been reading Acts. It's like God been having me read Acts and read Psalm 119 at the same thing, time. So every morning I read a little bit of Acts. And every morning I read a little bit of Psalm 119. And Psalm 119 is, is talking about nothing but keep the word of God in me. Keep the word of God on me. Lord, watch over me because I delight in your word. Delight over me because I walk in your word. Do you understand something? You see, like I said yesterday, I did a quick video by 18 minutes or whatever or so. And I was like, uh, the world loves to say this. God just wants a little bit of your time. But like I said, God wants more of your time than the world gets. You have to look at it like that. I'm not saying you're not going to have regular conversations with people and stuff like that. But God wants you to be on his, more, you to have him on your mind often. That's why you'll see him and everything. That's why you're meditating. When you're talking to somebody in a conversation, you know, when you start reading the word of God, when you're talking to somebody, you're already trying to listen to God's voice behind you in, in your head the whole time because you figure something I got to tell them. Or if not, you understand, you're going to be seeking God so much that it's going to be a part of your way of life. No matter what you do, no matter where you go, you understand, where you at, God's going to cross your mind often, often. You got to understand something that he said in David. When he told David, he said, I told somebody after my own heart. You got to think about what that means, after somebody's own heart. A man after God's own heart. That means his heart is so similar. <laughs> or got so many good characters, so many characteristics of God in it. You understand? Think about it. A man after his own heart. How can you be a man or a woman after God's own heart? When you don't even think about him. When you only give a little bit of your time to him on a daily basis. God wants more from us as Christians. You understand? He wants us to be ready in and out of season. You understand? Read Psalm 119. Read a lot of Psalms. You understand? Read Proverbs. It's wisdom too. It tells you about all kind of things. What not to do, who not to hang around, what woman to watch out for, what man to watch out for, this, that. You know, our parents, if you look at the world today, a lot of wisdom that the world uses comes straight from the Bible. They don't want to admit it. They just read the Bible and then write a book like they knew what they're talking about. But God had told us a lot of things before all these self-help books came along. You understand? The only thing about it is they mixed it with a little worldly wisdom. You understand? They mixed it with a little worldly wisdom. But like I said yesterday, the only way for a man to cleanse his path is through what? The word of God. So if you're only giving God just a little bit of your time, you see, I think people got this, this thing confused. 
All you need is a little faith as a mustard seed. He didn't say nothing about a little time. He said a little faith. If you have just enough faith as a mustard seed, that's faith. That ain't got nothing to do with how much time he wants you to spend with him. You understand? I think people that took that faith as a mustard seed, all you need is a little faith. All God needs is a little of your time. Nope. He want more. He want more. He wants as much time as you can give him. You understand? Till it's running out your, out your mouth every time you open your mouth up. You're saying something about God. You understand? When somebody's talking a conversation, you got to throw God up in it. You understand? You understand what I'm saying? That's how it works. You see, if you ain't got God on your heart, you understand? You're not going to talk about him. You're not going to even mention him at all. You're going to go on with the flow. You're going to blend in. I told you before, God gave me a mission years ago. God told me the same thing to two different people. Don't blend in, Houston. As a Christian, you are designed to stand out. You're not designed to be in a group and look just like the rest of the group. I ain't saying better than the rest of the group. I said you ain't designed to look just like them. It ain't about clothes neither. You understand? It's not about all that. It's about how you act. Like I did a song that I'm working on. It's called I'm Rich. But it's not about material riches. It's kind of saying rich in the way you walk. Rich in the way you talk. Rich in how you carry yourself. Rich in the word of God. You see, worldly riches pass away. But being rich in the word of God, it's going to take you to heaven. And you're going to stay rich for the rest of your life. As long as you keep your eyes focused on God. And focused on the truth. You see, we live in a world today. And they do everything to try to distort the word of God or make Christians feel this way or make this way. You understand? And one of the worst sayings I hate to hear from people, and I ain't gonna lie, I was in this category too. Man, it's something else left like the book. The, the Bible been written so many times. Man wrote the Bible. Now, if you're a Christian, I'm sure you've heard that before. Why are you trusting in a man-made Bible? Let me tell y'all something, people. Every book that you're learning from was written by a man. But every bit book that you're reading from wasn't inspired by God. Do you understand, people? That's the dumbest, stupidest saying you can ever hear from anybody. And I was stupid for saying it myself back in the day. Because when I first started reading the Bible, that's what I thought. I'm like, man, there's something missing in here, man. Man that took some books out the Bible. Man and did this. Man and distorted the Bible. And then God was like, okay, they might have distorted it, but my word would not return void, right? So it don't matter how much they distorted it. If you're seeking God and spirit and truth, and you trust in the Holy Spirit, it's going to tell you everything you need to know. So it's not really about the book. The book is a guidebook. To keep you grounded, to let you know the faith, let you know stories and things and such, how to walk and act. But the Holy Spirit, he said, when I leave you, I will not leave you comfortless. I will leave you a comforter. I will leave you the Holy Spirit that will teach you all things. Let me reiterate, that means all things you need to know. Whatever you need to know, the Holy Spirit is going to back the Bible. The Holy Spirit is going to rebuke anything that's not correct. Do you understand? So you see why you need the Holy Spirit in order to understand the Bible? You understand? You read in Acts so many times where the people who was reading the Bible and knew the word of God, God sent the apostles to them to teach them about Jesus and baptize them in the Holy Spirit. So you need both. You need both. You can't just go off the Bible. I didn't argue with somebody. And I swear to you. <laughs> I know you're supposed to swear, but that's one of my sayings. Now, it's not that I'm swearing to God or anything like that. Just so like I swear. You understand? But I'm talking to this guy on Facebook, right? And I promise you, I felt like Paul or Peter or any other apostle or Stephen or the blind man. So I'm talking to this guy. And this guy's like, I've been trained by a bishop. I've been trained in Hebrew. I've been trained in this. I went to school for this. I was like, okay. I've been trained 
by the Holy Spirit. I think the Holy Spirit overrides all your schooling. You understand? <laughs> I'm just being real with you. You see, that's how the Pharisees were. Oh, this man was unskilled. How did you going to teach us? You only a man that been your eyes been open for a day. How you going to teach us? And that's how a lot of people are, for real. They didn't learn the Bible. They didn't learn it. They didn't have special teachers, so-called special teachers. They know Hebrew. You understand? They know this. They know that. But do they know the Holy Spirit for real? You can sound like a Pharisee real quick. You understand? You can sound like a Pharisee real quick. Talking about doctrine. You understand? What's the use of knowing Hebrew and all this? But you got no discernment. You understand? You got no spiritual qualifications at all. You understand? No spiritual qualifications. You just got worldly doctrine qualifications. But you have never been through anything spiritual or anything like that. That means nothing to God. You understand? I'm just being real with you. Why you think he had a problem with the Pharisees? They knew the doctrine, but they didn't know nothing about spiritual things. If you can't discern spiritual things, makes sense, people. So for all the people out there that think they went to school for something and they know something, okay, okay. Do you know? Do you know some other things? You understand? Have you experienced anything in the spirit? You know? Come on now. You see, you know what God has gave me the gift to be able to come back people like that? To, to let them know that I know the word too. And I know a little bit more. It's not that I'm buff puffed up with pride. It's like, you got it confused, homie. Let me, let me tell you some things, you tell me some things. Like people are trying to voice their opinion or speak their opinion on things or think they know something because they taught, they learned from this teacher. Now watch this. They learned from this teacher and this teacher was a bishop. This teacher taught him everything he knew. Not knowing this teacher, this bishop was a blind leader of the blind. That's why you need the Holy Spirit. You won't need to learn from man. He said, are you needing that no man teach you? You understand? Think about all the apostles. Jesus Christ taught them. The Christ. The Holy Spirit taught them. But Jesus, when he sent them out the second time, he said, take your doctrine with you. So take the Torah with you. Take the, the book. Study that book too. But I'm going to teach you some more things. I'm going to teach you some things that those people that study the book don't know nothing about. Do you understand, people? Holy Spirit feel. You understand? I'm telling you. That's why a lot of people ain't being healed. People that went to school to be preachers. Went to school to be in the pulpit. And still can't discern spiritual things. I'm going to tell you how I know this is a proof. I ain't saying everybody. Because I believe some people who went to school baptized in the spirit too. But I don't believe all of them are. The Bible shows you that. The Bible shows you that. But I was watching a documentary. It was about people exercising demons. It was over there in regards to the Catholic Church. And this one Catholic priest, he was the only person that was, everybody trusted to exercise demons. And he had the gift of exercising demons, right? So we talking to, then he talking to another, he talking to a Catholic bishop or whatever. And a, he's over like a, the area. He's like the, the head Catholic priest over this territory. And the dude interviewing him, he was like, do you think that you can um, exercise demons? You're like, I don't think I'm skilled enough for that. I have to go to somebody else for that. Now, that told me right there that this man is not skilled in the spirit. He know the doctrine. But for his spiritual things, he's afraid of it. He said, I'm going to have to pass that torch on to somebody else. You understand? But this man is not over just his church. But he's over other churches. And this is a man that people choose to follow. If that's not a blind leader of the blind, I don't know what it is. If you're not qualified, if you're scared of demons, you don't need to be in the pulpit at all. You know what I'm saying? If you're scared to go and walk into somebody's house and somebody be like, I feel like I got some evil spirits in my house. 
if you're too scared to go in there and pray over it, you might need to find your new job title. I'm just being real with you people. You read the disciples' stories. They walked. They exercised. They healed. They were beat down. They had no fear. Do you understand? A man or a woman of God is not supposed to spread fear. That's why I don't wear the mask. I'm just being real with you people. You know, if God said in my heart to do it, I would. But as for now, I don't wear it. I'm a, I'm a Christian. I'm not designed to put people in fear. I'm not designed to make people fear anything. I'm not designed to make people fear the world. You understand? I'm designed to make people fear no one but God. Do you understand, people? Do you understand? How many times you read in the New Testament, the disciples, after Jesus baptized them in the Holy Spirit, that they went somewhere and they were scared? Did you hear them in jail when they were like, Peter was just waiting in jail and the circles? He wasn't begging and pleading. He wasn't crying. You understand? He was no coward. They took whatever went their way. You understand? When they taught stand in front of kings and stuff, was they scared? And you see, the spirit of truth has not gave me the spirit of fear. I'm telling y'all straight up, I have fought with demons before. I fought with witches. You understand? I just seen some things that I wouldn't want nobody else to see. Nobody else to see. But now I'm thinking like, maybe people need to see it. Maybe people need to see the spiritual realm. Because they don't think it's real. <laughs> you understand? Because they're in doubt. That's why they ain't growing. Oh, I don't believe in ghosts and such things. Or I don't believe in heaven or hell. You understand? Maybe you need to have a spiritual opening. You understand? Maybe you need to have a donkey or your pit bull come talk to you face to face. You understand? Like Belial, the donkey, talking to him to tell him some things. Maybe you need to have some spiritual awakenings. You understand? Because I'm telling you, unless you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, unless you're spiritual, that's what being baptized in the Holy Spirit means. You know, for a long time, I stopped calling myself a Christian. I was like, man, I ain't no Christian. So, I'm going to get you something else. I stopped calling myself a Christian for a long time because I, I think I'm like, I'm spiritual, I'm spiritual. And I start running to other people. I'm spiritual. I'm like, what you mean by spiritual? Well, I don't believe in the Bible. So I'm like, wow, I, I, I got to find something else to classify myself as. <laughs> because uh, if he's spiritual and I'm spiritual, we both spiritual, but we serving different masters. Something may end up here. So I started reading and God started putting back in my head, hey, Houston, you are a Christian. Call yourself a Christian. That's what makes you different from everybody else. If you want to walk around just saying you're spiritual, you got to be both. You got to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, but you are a Christian. You see, I didn't talk to people that said that. Don't call yourself a Christian. A Christian term is this and that. Okay, what do you want to call yourself? A saint? You understand? That's what that's what he said. You are a saint. You are a saint. Maybe I am. Maybe I'm not. But I like the term Christian better. Because I'm going to tell you why. I don't know if I'm a saint now. I can't just say that. I don't. I can't say that. That's something I don't know. You understand? Just, a, just step myself up in the category as a saint. You understand? That's kind of, that's real bold right there. That's a real bold. But I can classify myself as a follower of Christ. Because that's what I am. You understand? See, a lot of things that I see some people who read the doctrine and study from other people and read the Bible and study from other people, spiritually discernment, they are lost. They are lost. I always I like to ask, I pose the question, where are you getting this from? Like, show me your doctrine. Because I want to know some of the things that some of these people are getting their knowledge from. But I'm starting to realize they're getting it from blind leaders. They're getting it from people who they think are smart, who are actually foolish. You understand? That's why God says study to show yourself approved. That means nobody, nobody can't beguile you. Nobody can't trick you if you enter that word. 
You understand? If you enter, if you baptize in the Holy Spirit, nobody cannot mislead you. He said, my sheep know my voice and they won't answer to no other sheep shepherd. Nobody can't fool you. You understand? You see, if you ain't in the spirit, you can easily be misled. It's simple. That's why God want to give you the Holy Spirit. That's why what God offers, offers you, that's why Jesus gave up the ghost to teach you some things. You understand? He pushed this issue all the time, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Like I said yesterday, it's not the same as tongues. Tongues is a Holy Spirit type gift. But the Holy Spirit is deeper than just tongues. You understand? When you start reading Paul's teaching, Paul is talking about tongues. And he'll be like, if, if you speak in tongues to somebody who don't understand it, they ain't gonna, they'll be like, what the word? What is going on? It's like jibber jabber. You understand? He said, I'd rather speak a word plainly so somebody can hear it. Makes sense? So guess what? The Holy Spirit gives you straight up speech too so people can understand it. It's not just all about tongues. You know, I see, I hear people all the time. Man, I speak in tongues. I do this and do that. Well, you need to read what Paul says about those type things. You understand? But he said, even though I have the gift of tongues and, and have not love or charity, <laughs> you understand? Just because you speak in tongues, that don't make you better than somebody else. I'm going to say that too. People don't want to hear that. People don't want to hear that. You understand? Some people that speak in tongues just want to be seen. I'm just being real with you. I'm just being real with you, people. But if you want to save souls, don't you want some clear understanding? Don't you want somebody to understand what you're saying? Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth like Friday? You know, don't you want people to understand what you're saying? You understand? I'm telling y'all people, God is going to have a spiritual awakening in this world. A lot of people are going to be understanding more and more things in the coming years. You understand? Just be ready for it. You understand? The Holy Spirit is going to be poured out on this earth. It's going to be more knowledgeable people than you've ever seen in your life. Because the way I look at it is, the closer God gets, the more His power, you can feel His presence. Do you understand? He's always around, but I'm saying the closer Jesus gets to returning, the stronger the spiritual energy gets. You understand? That's why you try to grow a spirit. You're trying to grow as a Christian. You're trying to grow as a follower of Christ. And you're trying to grow a spiritual energy. You understand? Discernment. God, I, I, I read a scripture about, he's like, you don't no longer need milk anymore. You need strong, you need solid food. You understand? Having your senses uh, exercise to be able to discern between good and evil. So, spiritual things... You got to be able to see good. Let me say that now. Let me see that. You know, like a kid, all they see is good. Most little kids. Somebody give them candy, all they see is, that's a good person. He got some candy in his hand. But as you grow up, everybody that handed you something, you start realizing, hey, no, maybe I shouldn't take this. This may not be a good, this is not a good person. This is not a good thing. You start looking, looking at your judgment, mental behavior you, your discernment you understand you got to be able to see good and evil you know i'm saying as a christian you're supposed to take good out of everything now though right but you got to be able to see evil too think about it when paul when paul went in there and he was talking to the i talked about this i did a video on this when paul went in there and was talking to the man that was in charge and uh it was that, that fake false prophet there, that sorcerer boy, Jesus was there. You see, Paul had some discernment right there. He was like, his eyes fixed on that man, right? He saw what the man was doing. He saw the man was doing some evil work, and he called him out. That's called discernment. You see, now, if you don't want a spiritual gift and you don't want discernment, that same person called boy Jesus will come into your face and beguile you and trick you. But if you got the Holy Spirit, nobody's going to be able to fool you like that. God's going to show you your enemies. You understand? You're going to see the desire of your enemies on their faces. Don't you want that? 
He ain't say do something about it. You understand? He might compel you to talk or pray. You see, I'm going to think about the Old Testament. God was more like, hey, they messing up. Go attack them. You see, when he left the Holy Spirit behind, they messing up. Pray for them. They messing up. Pray for them. Send some prayers they way. You understand? That's going to help them. Because he's trying to give everybody a chance. Don't you understand? The mercy of God. He's not just taking you out from rebelling and disobeying him. Like he used to. You understand? He's giving you a chance. A chance before Jesus come back. That's, the, that's how merciful and gracious our God is. You understand? It's up to you though. But as I saying, back to the subject. You need spiritual gifts. If not, you'll fall for anything. What's the old saying that George Bush messed up? I'm proud of him to mess up too. Fool me once. Shame on you. Fool me twice. Shame on me. Make sense? Fool me once. Shame on you. You ain't going to fool me a second time. That's discernment. The, the more you grow, you're not going to be made a fool of. You understand? You're not going to be made a spectacle of. Nobody's going to be able to touch you as a Christian. That's part of being a Christian. That's part of having that armor on. That's part of having, you might go through something, you might even get fired. But the thing is, all things work together for those that love God. It don't matter if you get fired. God's going to always put you back where you need to be. I'm going to tell you a quick story. Last year around this time, Something happened. I'm not going to go to do much detail about it, but something happened. Everything was shaking up at my job. Everything was shaking up. I'm like, what in the world is going on? Shaking up to the fact that the way we do things was changed up, right? So, let's put it this way. I was taking off payroll. I was taking off payroll for a second. So, I'm like, man, this is crazy. You know what I'm saying? What's really going on? You see, the weapons will be formed against you. The enemy might even think they prevail. But here I am, still at the same job, on payroll yet again. You understand? Prospering. You understand? The enemy can try anything to try to disrupt you, but if you faint not, if you hang in there, you're going to get what God has for you. You understand? It doesn't matter. 